Hey, good morning. Mm, try, I, I'm waiting for my coffee order to come in. Here's a first world problem. I don't have enough variety here. Let's see. Uh, I guess I'll have vanilla custard pie. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I was looking at this inspirational quote this morning. And it said, um, some people thrive on negativity. They're just not happy unless they can have something negative to say. And I was thinking, you know, God bless my mother. She's been gone now oh, 20 years. But I really think that she got to a point in her life where it made her happy to complain. I mean, well, let me say this. She was comfortable in that realm of complaining. Um, you know, if we went to a restaurant, um, something, the waiter wasn't fast enough, or um, you know, it was always something was not just quite right. <clears throat> If we were traveling somewhere, it was taking too long or it was uncomfortable. Um, the thing is that what she would complain about, I mean, it was true, it was valid. You could look at things that way, but I mean, golly, it sure didn't help the situation. I mean, if the food was taking a long time to get to the table, I guess you know, some people would choose to sit there and complain about it. Um, but other people would use the time, you know, to chat or, I mean, heck, you know, chew on a breadstick or something like that. Uh, but the complaining part didn't do a whole lot to stimulate appetite. You know, because when your food got there, it wasn't like, Oh, the food that I ordered has arrived. It was like, well, finally. And, oh, golly. You know, if you're not at a place... I love my Grayson mug. <laughs> if you're not in a place where you're always complaining and that's your standard operating procedure, you haven't gotten there yet, hopefully... It's not become a habit. The way to prevent it from becoming a habit is to work on not complaining now. You know, actually, I'm pretty aware of when I say something that's a complaint or, or has a negative view about things. And I feel like, oh, why did I say that? And I try to head those situations off before something negative comes out of my mouth. Oh, this tastes good. Vanilla custard pie with almond milk. Oh, I love that. Makes me happy. You know, another way brings to mind of um, steering away from a negative bent in your life is to practice being thankful for things. I am so thankful. I love this mug, even though I've got Grayson right here. Um, when my, my daughter got it for me as a gift, and I've had Grayson groomed several times, and he's just looked so beautiful. I've had him groomed so he looks like a doodle, groomed so he looks like a regal poodle. But the only picture she could find when she was having this mug made was Grayson sort of all scruffy. And that's the way he looks like on a day-to-day -day basis unless he's just been groomed. Right, Grayson? So it, it makes me happy to see that because I'm seeing everyday life. Am I seeing everyday life with you, you scruffy doggy? Look at you. Yeah. I had to trim around his eyes because they were starting to disappear. He was getting so much hair around there. Anyway, but the thing is, you know, I'm thankful for the mug. I'm thankful for what's in it. Um, 
So one way to help steer you in a direction away from negativity is when you wake up in the morning, before your feet hit the floor, think of three things that you're thankful for. And before you go to bed at night, think of three things that you're thankful for. Because honestly, this does have an effect on your outlook. It actually affects the biochemistry in your brain. Did you know that? It's true. You know, and you may say, ah, oh, you know, that's a lot of bunk. That's silly. Yeah, I'm thankful for a lot of things, but gee whiz, you know, and you think of all these negative things. No, if you actually make a habit of thinking of positive things right when you wake up and right before you go to bed, your brain actually kind of forms a, you know, pattern of secreting hormones and stuff. And it will become easier to do those two little activities. And it'll benefit you so much. Mm. I'm thankful that my feet could hit the floor this morning, that I had a bed to sleep in, that I'm not in some war-torn zone or that it wasn't a hospital bed, that I have friends and family nearby, that I've got the first world problem of, oh no, I don't have enough choices for my morning coffee. I mean, oh, there's so much to be thankful for. I'm thankful for you guys. Cause you know, these days I, I still don't get together with people most of my socializing is either with my immediate family or else with neighbors outside, you know, when we're walking or maybe we'll sit down in front of somebody's apartment and chat for a while. But, you know, no get-togethers. But this is my big get-together every day. I hope that you have a lovely day. Mmm.